What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 2nd of April in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade. And we're going to be talking about NEO stock. NEO stock is one, is a stock that I've been getting a ton of questions about and we're going to be covering that one in this video so stay tuned for that but before we do get into the topics here all I ask from you guys is if you enjoy this video if you find value in this video or any other videos I upload on YouTube feel free to go down below and hit that like button guys it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you want to be connected with our community on a further basis there are two links down below in the description box for you one of them being the discord group chat and the other one being the facebook group both of those are 100 free of charge and i guarantee you guys if you join those communities right now you'll start to find a ton of value there so without further ado let's just talk about what is going on right now in the overall markets with about 13 minutes left to the close of the market here on the 2nd of april in two 2019, we can see the S&P 500 hasn't really budged, right? Not a crazy green day, not a crazy red day. It's more of a consolidation day today, up about $1.80, up about 0.06% as of right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down quite a bit, not a lot, but down a little bit more than what the S&P is up in terms of percentage points. We're down about 0.24. 4% on the day as of now, down about $62, nearly $61 right now. The NASDAQ composite is actually having a pretty solid day, up about $31, up nearly 0.45, 0.42% on the day and we'll hop back over here when the video is wrapping up so we can see where exactly we ended up closing but again this is where we are right now with about 13 minutes left in the market so let's just hop back over here to the S&P 500 very quickly we'll do a technical breakdown and we'll talk about what is going on here through my perspective in the S&P 500 and we talked about this in yesterday's video a little bit and for those of you guys that recalled in yesterday's video, I was talking about how since we pushed to a higher high in the S&P 500, pretty much continuing the uptrend, this could really today on Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, we could possibly see a little bit of consolidation before we pull back in the markets. And that is exactly what we're slowly starting to see right now. Notice how we didn't pop up aggressively and have another strong green day. We're consolidating on top of the old resistance, which is now a new support at about 2860, right? And notice how every time over the past couple of months, we've popped to a higher high in the S&P 500, we've seen a very similar pattern, right? We've consolidated a little bit and then we pulled back, right? Just take a look. Higher high here, we consolidated for a day or two, then we pulled back. Higher high, consolidation for a couple of days here, then the pullback. Higher high, consolidation, then the pullback. So this is something that we're slowly starting to see form right now. Am I saying 100% that we're going to pull back tomorrow? No, I'm not saying that. No one really knows what's going to happen, but this could just be the start of our consolidation phase before we either pull back or we pop up to another, you know, higher high at that point, right? Those are two different scenarios that can happen here. But what, but all I'm saying and what I'm seeing here from the data, guys, is we're just simply consolidating today on top of this old resistance as a new support. So in terms of tomorrow, just keep an eye. Are we going to consolidate again? Are we going to slightly dip below the support, which could signal some sell-off tomorrow, a sell-off tomorrow, maybe heading into the next day as well? Or are we going to slowly start to pop up 
from here tomorrow and potentially make another higher high, right? This is something that's very possible. And if we hop over here to the one day, one minute, we can see how strong this consolidation is and how we literally bounced exactly at 2860 today we literally bounced right off of there and we've been consolidating and slowly leveling up higher towards the close of the market now so those are just a couple of things to keep an eye on for tomorrow guys in terms of the S&P 500 and that's pretty much it right we talked about how the RSI yesterday was getting a bit overbought which is why I personally thought we were either going to consolidate or pull back at some point this this week and as of now we're seeing that is what's happening guys just some some pure consolidation in the S&P 500 so hopping over here to the Dow Jones we talked about the critical resistance that the Dow Jones was at in yesterday's video which you guys can clearly see was at about $26,200. And this is a level of resistance stemming back from the beginning of November in 2018, back in more towards the end of February here, about a month, a month and a half ago, uh, at about $26,200. We failed to get there a couple of weeks back. We, we got topped off at about $26,000. And now we got to this level again yesterday with the crazy green day that we did have. And now we're seeing a bit of resistance at the Dow or rather on the Dow at this same resistance point right so just keep an eye on this level tomorrow and just like the S&P 500 the Dow Jones is a bit overbought and quite frankly Every single index right now in the market, if you're just taking a look at the uh, relative strength index here, is a bit overbought, right? We're seeing the threshold of 70, which means it's overbought, and especially if we're above that level, it's extremely overbought. We can see the lines here are very close and even touching that 70 threshold, which could really indicate why we're pulling back here in the Dow Jones today. So if we're just looking a bit closer here, you know, this is something that could either uh, open up two possibilities, right? Are we going to end up, same thing with the S&P, are we going to end up breaking above this level? Actually, not the same thing as the S&P because the S&P already broke the level of resistance, but are we going to get rejected further here and then test the 26,000 level of support, which is a previous resistance, or are we going to finally break this resistance tomorrow, hold it as a new support, and then start gunning for those all-time highs over the next couple of weeks? These are some things that we have to keep an eye on. But again, not too crazy of a day here, guys. You know, not too crazy of a day whatsoever. And just judging on the one day, one minute, you know, although we did gap down, which is why we're a bit red today, you know, this is a pure consolidation day again for the Dow Jones, right? We can see the lower day at about 26,128, the high of day at about 26, or rather, no, at, at about 26,217. So we've been really just, uh, you know, trading between about 90 points here up and down up and down up and down and we're slowly starting to see a little bullish cross here on the one day one minute so could this signal some more green tomorrow this is a possibility guys we will have to see what the futures are looking like tomorrow of course but as of now again just a pure consolidation day a little bit of a pullback but just mostly a consolidation day here in the Dow Jones and hopping over here to the Nasdaq composite very quickly guys we're at the same kind of a uh uh, resistance point as the Dow. We're at a high here at about 7,500, which has proven to be a resistance from back in, or rather on the 22nd of March in 2019, about a week, a week and a half ago from when the time I'm recording this video. And we hit that level of resistance and we honestly pulled back pretty aggressively, right? We ended up double bottoming at about 7,300, which is a pretty good bullish move that we're heading back up. And from there, we popped above the EMA. We popped above the 50 SMA and we started to reverse to the upside. But just like the Dow, just like the S&P guys, the NASDAQ is overbought and it honestly might be more overbought than the S&P and the Dow because we can see... You know, just take a look here, guys. We're getting over the 70 threshold. We're at about 72 right now on the RSI. So 
honestly, even if we were to break above this level at some point, we are going to see a pullback, whether it's 1, 2, 3% in the NASDAQ. So very simple here, guys. Not too much to say, honestly. Are we going to break this level tomorrow? Are we going to break this level, end up maintaining it as a new support? Or are we going to get rejected, pull back a bit for the RSI to drag down a bit before we start to push back up and then potentially test the same resistance? These are things that we have to keep an eye on and we have to keep in the back of our heads in terms terms of the NASDAQ. So that's just the brief market update for today, guys. Nothing more than a little consolidation day for the overall market. So let's talk about what I ended up trading today. And for those of you guys that were in the group chat, the Discord chat, again, link down below, 100% free. We talked about how DGAS was doing very well, right? And that's one that I actually called out yesterday in yesterday's video, if you guys ended up watching that. And again, we talked about it earlier today in the Discord group chat. And DGAS is actually... Uh, an ETF that trades based upon natural gas. And whenever natural gas is selling off, DGAS is going up in price. And we can see here on the, uh, let's go to the 20-day, one-hour chart very quickly. I was talking about natural gas in yesterday's video and talking about how if we were to pop up here to the 50 SMA, which we actually broke above, but we got rejected by the 180 SMA, which is actually something that I was also watching. But if we were to get rejected by these moving averages to start to push to a lower low, that was going to A, open up margin on DGAS and open up a pretty good opportunity to trade the ETF, right? And we can see that's exactly what ended up happening, right? We popped up here yesterday and then we started to sell off this this morning, really overnight, heading into the market open, which really opened up an awesome opportunity in DGAS. And if we just hop here, we can see it even closer, right? We popped up to 271 this morning, and then we slowly started to sell off all the way down to 267, which again opened up that awesome, awesome margin of profit on DGAS. So let's just go over here and take a look, right? So we can see. You know, as natural gas was pushing up, you know, DGAS opened up, or rather, actually, yeah, it did. It opened up that margin of profit to 102, and we slowly started to fill that gap heading into the market open. And I pretty much got in here, guys, on this pullback and the bounce on the 50 simple moving average. And it seems a bit choppy here because, honestly, the volume on DGAS wasn't too strong today, which is why if you notice on some charts when the candlesticks, they aren't looking full. Let's just go to uh, Apple very quickly because this one has a ton of volume. Just take a look at the candlesticks here versus um, DGAS, right? This is something that you can point out and see if a stock has a lot of volume or not. Well, DGAS today, guys, it didn't have too much volume, but I ended up getting in on this little pullback again and the bounce on the 50 SMA. And it was a pretty much a quick little run up trade from about 10, 10 up to about 10.30, we can see that little run up from about 104 up to about 106. It was a 2% move that I was actually able to get about 1.5 to 1.6% of. Again, it's not a too crazy, it's not too crazy of a trade, but that is what I ended up doing, which makes me pretty happy, guys, because I'm more of a conservative trader looking to take about 1% to 2% on my day trades, and I actually had a couple of other positions that were doing very well, Apple being one of them, which is actually one that I took my profits on right before recording this video. And for those of you guys that don't know, Apple is one that I got in on on this big sell-off that we saw yesterday, and I was planning on holding it as a swing trade up near the 195 um, uh, uh, resistance here, right? We can see the resistance at 195, the support at 185. I got in because we confirmed the bounce at that level. We were pushing on the 50 SMA very nicely, holding above it rather. And the, the fact that we ran up very aggressively today, guys, towards the close of the market, I just wanted to play it safe and take my profits here. I did initially, uh, there goes the market. I did initially have a limit sell 
at about $194.50. But again, I just decided to play it a bit safe, and I sold a little bit before that, a little bit shy of that, which is not too big of a deal, right? It's not bad sometimes to lock in your profits when you are up a decent amount on a swing trade that really popped up pretty quickly, right? So I got in, I believe, I think it was like 189.10 or something like that, up to where I ended up selling. I took about a 2.5% profit on an overnight swing trade, which again, I can't complain, guys. So that's just, that's the second trade I made, and that's just really the trading update for today's video. So let's talk about Neo stock guys Neo stock is one again that I've been getting a ton of questions about and this is a Chinese electric vehicle company very similar to Tesla but really it's not even close to the same size as Tesla but a lot of people like to compare it to Tesla stock right so I have some notes here on my phone which really show why Neo stock in general saw this huge tank that we saw over the past couple of months and again this is an electric vehicle company super speculative company at IPO a couple of months back I'm sure a lot of you guys know about it so this is one that we can see based on the technicals here popped up to ten dollars and we sold aggressively all the way down to nearly five dollars really under five dollars to about four dollars and ninety cents per share so neo stock lost half of its value and you may be asking yourself why did this happen so let me just read some notes to you guys off of my phone pretty much neo reported bad numbers mid-march which led the stock to tank neo expects Bigger than expected slowdown in deliveries for the first quarter of 2019 due to accelerated deliveries made at the end of last year in anticipation of electric vehicle subsidy reductions in China in 2019. Another thing that, that, that I uh, saw and want to point out here is that NEO canceled a plan in tw from 2017 for a Shanghai manufacturing plant and also management said that early 2019 sales volume is expected to drop so those are a bunch of different things which in my opinion a lot of people out there agree led to neo stock tanking in price which honestly opened up my eyes here for a potential speculative swing trade and a lot of people that have been following me for a while you know that i don't really play with stocks like this you know uh more speculative stocks lower price stocks you know kind of a penny stock here not technically a penny stock but i consider stocks from one to five dollars penny stocks as well but this is one guys that has a lot of hype behind it and when it runs it can run a ton so this is one that i'm not looking to put a ton of money in i'm gonna put a an amount of money that i'm willing to lose right so in this case you know i might put 500 to 1000 dollars in it as a very speculative swing trade if we see the technical break that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And again, please guys, do your own research. Don't just buy this on my personal opinion. This is money that I'm willing to lose. And companies like NEO, they can go bankrupt. They can go bankrupt 100%, guys. This is a company that literally just IPO'd. There's a lot, a lot of hype behind it, but there's a lot of speculation involved as well. And honestly, it's opening up an opportunity in my eyes for a swing trade again due to the big, big chunk that we saw of a loss here. And the fact that although, you know, the bad news that I just told you guys, the sales and the revenue is, is it's, it's growing pretty quick, right? This is a fast growth company and sometimes again with hype behind it stocks like this could end up going on runs after they've gotten battered down so just pretty much guys I, I i bet you can understand and predict what i'm about to say here if tomorrow we break this resistance right here of the 50 simple moving average that's going to be a huge huge technical break here on neo stock and that's going to put us at a level where we could be reversing to the upside right but let's say tomorrow we get rejected by this point 
you know, we slowly start to push back down to the five levels. Maybe if we start testing the $4 level again, I'm going to be very cautious and patient and probably not going to put money in it until we get this technical break and eventually a break out of this old support, which is now a new resistance at about $5.70. And if we were to break that level, hold it as a new support, that's going to be the start of a little cup pattern here. I'm sure you guys can see it. And we could potentially shoot back up at this point on a technical basis if we hop over here. You know, we could potentially, and especially if we break out of this old resist or support rather, which is now a new resistance at $6 roughly, if we break out of that level and hold it as a new support again, we can maybe run up to $6.50. The next level can be around $7.30. There's a lot of upside here on NEO in terms of a technical perspective, right? So just keep an eye on the break above the 50 simple moving average here. And then eventually, are we going to break $6 again, which is an old support, now a new resistance? These are levels that we need to break above, in my opinion, for NEO to start making a bullish run. So keep an eye on on those levels, guys, I sure am. And again, super speculative play here. I don't typically play stuff like this, but this is getting a bit interesting in my eyes. I'm not afraid to lose $500 to $1,000. I'm sure I'm not going to lose all of it unless, we, unless they go bankrupt. But that's just my opinion. Let me know down below. What do you guys think about Neo stock? I would love to know in the comment section. That is, you know, the brief analysis here of my personal opinion. And again, my opinion, do your own research, please, guys. So tomorrow, what other stocks am I watching? You may be asking yourself that now. Let's just talk about that very briefly and let's just hop right into it, guys. So Tesla today, we got a little bit of a confirmation here that we're getting rejected by that 180 simple moving average resistance on this 180 four-hour chart that we've been talking about here over the past couple of months. So this, honestly, guys, could be a potential put option play here or a short position if we end up opening red tomorrow if it's trending down pre-market hours that's most likely going to tell me that we're going to continue to push down here in terms of tesla but another thing to watch is are we going to hold this 280 level of support which was an older resistance back in the middle of october if we hold this level we could potentially be bouncing back up to retest that 180 sma this is something that can very well well happen. Let's say tomorrow again, like I've been saying, if we break out of this level, right? Let's say we break out of this downward trending line. That's going to be a huge bullish move in Tesla. We could potentially be seeing $300 per share if that does end up happening. And I do apologize. My fan on my laptop right now is going crazy. So if this is bothering you, I do apologize if it's loud. I don't even know if you guys can hear it to be completely honest. But again, I apologize if it is loud. So NVIDIA here, um, this is something that could potentially be a bullish move if we break out of the 185 resistance tomorrow. And this is actually one that I'm trading myself. I'm still holding on to those shares. And I'm looking to add more potentially if we break out of this level. And I'm also looking to possibly take my profits here tomorrow on NVIDIA. So this is one I'm watching, especially if we end up holding this resistance as a new support. So keep an eye on that one. UWT today, guys. Oh my goodness. Absolutely parabolic crude oil has been going off the wires here off the wires crude oil has been going crazy guys if we just hop over here we can see another dollar move on crude oil we busted out of that 61 dollar resistance now i honestly just want to see a pullback on crude oil to retest this level and i'm looking to go long there on uwt if that does end up happening i'm going to be looking to hop in and out of uwt Honestly, it looks like we did get the pullback here, but I missed the entry. We consolidated a bit, then popped back up. Now, I just want to see, are we going to retest that level, maybe pop back up again? That's something that I'm looking to see. So those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs, guys, that I'm personally watching. I really wanted this video to mostly be about NEO stock. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. 
Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All the links are down below. The free Discord, the free Facebook. I'd really appreciate it if you guys did join those. I'll catch you all in the next video. Again, thank you all for watching. Have a good one. Peace out.